hello, hello everyone and welcome to the 169th episode of Tuesdays with Toby. My name is Toby Frierson and as you can see, I can hardly contain myself because two days ago, two days ago, the South Carolina Lady Gamecocks completed the Revenge Tour. Thank you, Raven Johnson, uh, for putting that out there and for working as hard as you did to make sure we avenged last year's loss against Iowa in the Final Four. Let me set the stage for you. Hope you all are doing well. Hope you have some context for where I'm even going into because I really hope you watched the game this past Sunday. As many of you know, if you've been following this channel, I started the season with the Lady Gamecocks at their very first game against Notre Dame in Paris. And uh, when I went over there, I had really high hopes for the season. I actually remember asking for this trip last May. So um, almost full circle a year now, I was like, hey, I just saw where South Carolina's opening the season in Paris. Can we go? Um, and did not think that was going to be met with a resounding yes, by the way. But it was met with a yes. And having seen them then and seeing a whole lot of stuff that I just didn't expect, because it was a brand new team, I got my hopes up for a great season. And, and in the middle of there, I got a chance to get a few more games in, got a chance to go to games with my brother and my mom and one of my coworkers who I share the love of basketball with. Um, and of course, Larry, he's been going to some of these games as well. He took me to Paris. Um, but you all, I, I, wanna, I wanna stay on point. So I've got some footage for you to see in just a moment of me live in the moment wrapping up the game this past Sunday. I got a chance to watch it out um, with friends. So you'll kind of see the clock winding down. You'll see Don in her post game celebration, which actually wasn't a celebration. You'll hear me a little bit, but it was loud in the restaurant that I was in. But when Don, when Holly put the mic in Don's face and wanted her to respond to the win, and she buckled over and she was quite emotional. I knew exactly what was happening when she buckled over because praise rec recognizes praise. And I was like, oh my gosh, she is overcome with uh, emotion in terms of giving thanks and giving gratitude to God, whom she's mentioned quite a bit um, over the last several weeks and uh, to a lot of people's chagrin. They haven't been okay with her. Um, well, actually, it was one particular statement. I think people are okay with Don praising the Lord and giving credit and saying words like blessing. But I think her quote was, there's something wrong with you if you don't believe there's a God. And that one just got people all into a frenzy. But guess what? Guess what? Coach Taylor didn't apologize for that. And I'm not going to go too long on a tangent. Let me take you right into um, real time here. This is what happened on Sunday as the Lady Game Cops wrapped up their perfect season. We have come to the end of the women's basketball season. The game is behind me. We've got 20 more minutes left. Uh, we've got uh, we've got 20 more seconds left. Excuse me. Uh, they're still making a whole season about Caitlin Clark, but we're gonna get into it today. We're gonna we're gonna discuss the game. I, I got you. I got you. We're gonna discuss. Uh, the South Carolina Gamecocks through and through. Y'all know I started the season with them in Paris. And yes, I had the same get up on. No shame. Absolutely. Here we go, y'all. 19 seconds away. We're going to get into it. And folks, just like that, it is over. The South Carolina Gamecocks have won the 2024 National Championship. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at Leah. She can't. She, oh my God. Yo, that's a posture of praise. That's a posture of praise right there. She cannot say a word. Oh my God. Oh my God. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.
So everyone, like as you watch that just now, right? As you watch the end of the game, doing no damn. How do we get here, right? How in the world does a team get to 38 and 0? And yes, I know other teams have done it. Um, particularly UConn was the last to do it in 2016. But how did a team with five new starters get to 38 and 0? Right? And the only thing I can come up with, guys, as far as um, following this team and following sports and um, just having a level of what I consider success for myself and what I see as success in others is there's a formula for this. This thing is completely like written down. Like Don doesn't have a cheat code. Uh, she has strategy. She has a tremendous background. She has um, care and affection for these women that goes beyond them as basketball players. Um, to my knowledge, Don's not a mom. And as I've listened to a lot of the interviews, a lot of the girls describe her as mother-like. There's a formula for this is what I was trying to say. And I feel like while we're at three championships as the South Carolina Lady Gamecocks, I feel like we're just getting started. The team that we just saw on Sunday, there's only two people leaving, two pieces, and there's only one starter leaving. That's scary. I will say that again. The team that we saw Sunday only has one starter leaving. And um, Tessa Johnson, who has kind of had an up and down season all year, um, is basketball from Minnesota, um, super cool personality. I'm really starting to enjoy Tessa and all the interviews and things that I'm seeing. Tessa, Tessa offensively put us on her back on Sunday. Not that we really needed to be put on anybody's back, but Tessa was absolutely incredible. She had a lot of confidence out there. Raven Hollywood Johnson with his lockdown D um, on Caitlin that completely held her after Caitlin had her breakout first quarter. Um, Raven clamped down on her and and it, and it worked because Raven is that kind of defender. And uh, and then of course Cardoza. We can't say enough about how we're going to miss her. We can't wait to see her at the next level. Y'all go buy these WNBA tickets. Go out here and support these women as they get to the next level. For so many years, women had to go overseas as their only option to continue to play basketball. And now we have it here in our arenas across several different markets. And it's even expanding. Golden State's getting a team um, uh, in 2025. So, so here we are. Um, and I just called a few of those names. Of course, Ashlyn Watkins did what she's done all year. But I heard a stat earlier today, which is truly um, something I want to hone in on. No Carolina player over this season has averaged more than 28 minutes per game. There's 40 minutes in a women's basketball game. Well, 40 minutes in basketball period, not women's and men's. Um, and no, no player has averaged more than 28 minutes or maybe even played more than 20. It might not even be an average. That is remarkable. Talk about being a part of a team. Talk about equally distributing um, the time and the touches. What it has led to is we didn't get our names called for individual awards. We've got all these superstars that those who are watching the Gamecocks know to be superstars, but they're not filling up a stat sheet because I can't fill up a stat sheet if I'm playing 20 minutes and somebody else is playing 40, right? And guess what? We didn't care. We didn't care at all because this is what our attention and our time and our focus has been on all year long. We wanted to be national champions. And when you go after something in a certain way and when you keep your eyes fixated and focused on what that thing is that you're trying to do, you can get there. You can get there. There's so many lessons that can be learned from this team. There's so many lessons that can be learned from our coach. Um, and we relatively did it drama free. There was the SEC championship game against LSU. There was, and Cardoza had to stand on business. And I got a whole episode about what Cardoza did. Um, but she went from that moment which was not a great moment 
to now being a national champion. And uh, just hats off, ladies. As, as a fan, I can't tell you all what it does for me to even just think about the future of, of basketball. My mother has asked me for tickets next year. Boy, oh boy, I'm gonna move. I was about to say heaven or hell. I don't even know why I would ever say that statement. I'm gonna do the best, the, the, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure my mom gets these tickets next year um, and she gets to these games. Um, so hey y'all, uh, I just wanted to come on real quick and talk Gamecocks basketball. I don't have stats to share with you guys. The guy just raw emotion from a fan who loves this game. Um, who's very, very excited uh, for the future. And I gotta get my collection up. I need more. I should have been in a Carolina hoodie right now, but I wore two hoodies this weekend and a whole dress. All my clothes, well, they weren't available for this recording. Um, hey y'all, as I say each week, I'm just so excited um, that y'all still follow me on this platform. Who knows what we'll talk about next week. It won't be basketball. Um, uh, but we'll get back into something and I hope you guys like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you back here next Tuesday. Go Gamecocks.